Hello everybody and welcome to Learning with Chrono. Today I will be going over the automatic smelting system I created in the Community Craft server. At first glance, it does appear to be extremely complicated. But once it's broken down to its constituent components, it's really easy. There are actually only three parts of this furnace. The first part is splitting the items from each of the chests into two outputs. This part gets repeated over and over and over again. The second part is the furnaces themselves. That's relatively simple. The third part is the elevator to take things back up to the general location of the source. Now the really complicated part is the splitting things evenly between two outputs. In my testing I discovered three ways to do that, as demonstrated here. The first way is the simplest way. Basically it's a large chest on top of two hoppers with two different outputs. These could be anything from furnaces to another line of hoppers, or in this case we have a chest and a trap chest to keep the output separated. And I can demonstrate this easily enough by throwing a stack of stone in the large chest, and everything starts getting pulled out. As we can see, that it's getting pulled out two at a time. Now the reason for that is because each of these hoppers, every cycle, reaches up and pulls one item out at a time. Since there are more than two items, each hopper is able to do that, thus we end up with a half a stack in this chest, and a half a stack in this chest. But what if we needed to split off this chest, per se? Well, let's demonstrate this by extending the input of the large chest. So imagine this situation mirrored right beside it. So we have a large chest up here, we have two hoppers outputs, we have a large chest here, thus it's outputting into its own two output chests. So out of this hopper, everything's going to be coming one at a time. So let's just, for example, throw half a stack in here. Now we can see that things are coming out one at a time, thus they go through the hopper one at a time, and they go into this large chest one at a time. And as this chest empties, and everything cycles through the system, we can see that this chest has nothing in it. But this chest has everything in it, the entire half stack that we threw up in the initial chest. Now the reason that that happens is when the hoppers cycle, they both look at the chest, but only see one item at a time. Because this hopper can only output at the same exact speed that these hoppers could input. So one of the hoppers has to take precedence, and due to Minecraft programming, that's going to be the westmost or the southernmost hopper, depending on which way your large chest is facing. So if this hopper takes precedence when there's only one item in the chest, and this hopper can only output one item at a time, everything ends up in the westernmost chest. That's where I came up with this idea. This was my first design to try to get the hoppers to disable automatically so that as this hopper takes, it gets disabled and then this hopper can take. And I did that by basically setting it up so that when something goes through the chest and then goes through the hopper, it fires off a redstone signal which activates this sticky piston to pull this redstone block over and disable this hopper. And then the same exact thing happens on this side. So then this hopper is disabled, thus allowing this hopper to pull an item, and thus sending its own redstone signal off, and activating its piston to pull the redstone block back. And I can demonstrate that easily enough just by throwing one item at a time into this large chest. So one, another one, and we can see that the redstone block went forward and then it went back again. And we can also see that there's one stone in here, and there's another stone in here. So everything distributes evenly. And that will work great if, say, you have a furnace and you want to cook, let's just say, a stack of cobblestone. We can see that, obviously, it's going to be a little slow because that's how vanilla furnaces work. But as things go through the system, we can watch the system work. And thus, since this hopper is now disabled, that means that this chest holds the one piece of stone. 
And if we wait a little bit longer, we can see that the other piston fired. And we can see that this chest held another piece of stone. And if we let the system run a little bit, not long, we can see that it will evenly distribute throughout the chests. I believe that is a long enough test to demonstrate how this system works. We can see that in this chest we have four pieces of stone, and in this chest we have four pieces of stone. So this system does work, and it works fairly well. But what if you need to output, say, this chest after it went from the large chest? Well, I can demonstrate that by taking our furnace here and replacing it just with a regular chest. So basically this is the same exact test as we did over here with the extra chest, just with the new system we created. Well, let's throw, say, half a stack of stone in there since that's what will be coming through. Ah, but we see a problem right away. This piston extended, but never retracted to disable this hopper. Well, the reason for that is this hopper outputs at the same exact speed as this hopper inputs. But of course, this hopper also outputs at the same exact speed as the hopper inputs. That means that this hopper is never actually empty. Because as one comes in here, it instantly gets pulled into here, and then gets pushed out, but at the same time, this hopper pulls another one from the chest. So this signal always stays active, thus never disabling this hopper. And we end up with everything in this chest. So this setup works, but not quickly. It's slow and it's accurate, but it's not built for speed. That's where this setup comes in. Now this looks a little bit different, and to be 100% honest, I cannot properly explain why it works. All I know is that after extensive testing, it works. And basically what happens, what the original idea was, is that this hopper gets an item in it, thus disabling the hopper behind it, but still allowing the material to go from this hopper into the chest, thus turning off the signal again. And I can demonstrate this by throwing a stack of stone in this uppermost chest. Basically what we have here is the same exact test as we just did over there that failed, and over here that failed. So we throw in a stack of stone, and we can see it's pulling out one at a time, exactly like we would expect. And we can see the redstone firing in a pattern that we wouldn't expect. Two fires here, and then two fires here. But they trade back and forth. So if we let this stack disperse throughout the system entirely, we can look in these chests and we can see we have a half a stack of stone in here, and we have a half a stack of stone in here. So this is the system that we want to output from this output. So this is what we would use on the end of this. Now if we take a look at the system that I have created here as an example, we can see that I'm actually using two of the basic splitting contraptions that I built over there. The first one that I showed off is actually the initial set of chests that are used. So we can see underneath here, we have two hoppers directly underneath the chest going into two separate hopper line outputs. We also have this chest over here, which does the same exact thing. Now, this chest is for fuel, and this chest is for the cookable material. Cobblestone, iron ore, that kind of thing. And then they get split off into this chest, for example, which then also has two hopper outputs, which go into those chests over there. But this is where we start using the third contraption that I showed off with the comparators and the repeaters and the very strange repeating patterns. This is also duplicated underneath it for the coal as well, which I will go into detail later on. Because how these hoppers work, you have to build it backwards. 
So you start from the output and build towards the input. But because of how this machine is built, we can actually start from the furnaces themselves and work backwards. So the first thing we do is we need a couple furnaces. So let's plunk down two right there. Behind it goes two hoppers, one going into the first one, one going into the second one, and then two more hoppers going into the first two. And then we just take a regular chest, not a trap chest, it doesn't matter in this case, and we put down a large chest crossing over the back two hoppers. And we take our comparators, we put them to the front two hoppers, and then our repeaters to extend the signal that the comparators will output. Now the reason we do that, and I will show you, is if we put just one item in this hopper, it activates the comparator, but we can see that it only activates one line of redstone. That comparator will only output enough to fire off one line of redstone. So there's never going to be enough redstone to turn around and be put into a block. So even if it's nice and tight and clean there, that block will never get powered. So what we have to do, we have to extend it by adding a repeater. Now, as everybody knows, once a repeater is activated, it will fire off all 15 lines of redstone. But we don't need it to. We just need it to go turn around and activate this block here, which it will do because it's in its straight line setup that we see here. And then once we have this set up, we just repeat it on this side. So we have our comparator, we have our redstone repeater, we have our U-turn of a redstone line, and then we have a block. Any block will do as long as it can hold a redstone signal. So cobblestone, brick, solid blocks, but not glass, for example. So there's the initial design. Well, the next thing we need to do is get the input on the top, because right now all we have is the input on the back, and the input on the back is for the coal. So it's for the fuel to burn. To put things to be cooked into the system, they have to go into the top. So one would think, oh, just plunk it down there, plunk it down there, and have those two attached to those two. Well, that won't work because you can't turn your redstone signal around. You could put down you know, your cobblestone here or whatever you're building on, put down your comparator, put down your repeater, but from there you're screwed. You can't turn the redstone around to go the other direction because that's in the way. Well, there's an easy way to work around that, and that's to extend it higher. Well, then one would think, it would just have to be like that. Well, there's an interesting thing that happens when a hopper is on top of another hopper. This hopper doesn't work with the comparators properly. So what we have to do, we have to extend it even further back. So basically, we're right on top of the first system. And then from there, we can just create our platform directly above the first set of equipment put down our comparator, our repeater, our line of redstone, and our block, and then repeat it again on the opposite side. Now, you might be thinking, well, if the comparator doesn't work off of this, if it's above another hopper, why would it work on this one if it's above nothing? Well, I don't know why this doesn't work, so I can't tell you exactly why this does, all I know is that it does. It might be a glitch that it does work. It might be a glitch that this doesn't. I'm not sure. All I know is that this setup does actually work. So there, now we have something that looks complicated, but in the end, isn't. 
and we have a chest dedicated for the incoming coal, and we have a chest dedicated for the incoming, say, cobblestone, since that will, that's exactly what we'll be testing with. Now, that's great for two furnaces, but we already know how to output to two furnaces. We just use the first setup that I explained earlier, just this little setup, and just have two furnaces there instead of two chests. The entire point of this is so that we can do something bigger than that, say, for example, four furnaces. Well, then we just take this entire contraption and duplicate it over here. Now, when we duplicate it, we have to start one block over because you can't have two redstone lines side by side and expect them not to touch. So all we really have to do is just block off this area here. And that way we know that we can't build there. And then we just start from the sides and work our way down, basically backwards to what we had built before. And then you know exactly where to put your furnaces and your hoppers and basically everything else. And it's, like I said, just repeating what we built over there, over here. And there we have it. Now, you might be a little bit confused by expecting that this redstone signal, once it's activated, will turn on this block as well, thus messing up this system up here. But that's not how redstone works. Redstone cannot activate two blocks in a line. So this one will only be the one that's electrified from this line, and this one will be the only one that's electrified from this line. Now, these two blocks here will be powered from this redstone that's above it, but it will not interfere with the redstone below it, or in the other case, this redstone will not interfere with the blocks above it. So that takes care of building the output for our four furnace system. Well, then how do we do the input? Well, that's simple. We just got to create hopper lines from the four chests up to our two, basically those two in our example up there. And that's easy. You just create your hopper lines, and you got to come two out, because you can't have your hoppers lined up like this, because as I said before, that block will be activated by that redstone line, thus disabling that hopper, which breaks the system. So we just bring our hopper line over, do the same thing on the other side. And as we can see, obviously it won't center because we have an odd number of blocks here to deal with. I take advantage of this. What I do is I bring one side over further, so that way we have two here. And then I can attach hoppers on top here and here. And then when I bring this line over, I can just follow the same exact setup. Oops. We need to make sure to pull these back and then up, or we interfere with our other line of hoppers. So basically, I just pull our line over here, repeat the same on this side, but bring it the whole way over so that when it gets pulled back, both inputs can sit side by side. So we can have our chest here, and then we have to actually have a trap chest here because we can't just put down a regular chest beside another chest. Minecraft doesn't like that. It doesn't work that way. So we just take a trapped chest and put it down here. Now, what I would recommend doing is labeling these chests. That way you know that this one is the input because it's going into the topmost set of hoppers. And then the other one is the output because it's going to the bottommost set of hoppers. It can get confusing after a while. But let te let's test this to make sure. Now we know this is the fuel chest, so if we put our fuel in there, you can see that it's going off. And if we put our cobblestone in this chest, we can see that nothing's actually happening. Now this is why I recommended we don't use trap chests before. Because if you're looking in the system and you have a trap chest open, that stops hoppers from working. We can see that the hoppers aren't pulling cobblestone out. But the second we close the chest, we can see that the uppermost set of redstone signals activate because now it's pulling from the chest. And we can see all four furnaces are firing. 
and they're cooking up just fine. So now our cooking is complete, and each of our four furnaces has 16 cooked stone in it. Well, that's great now, but part of this was to make everything convenient. Uh, it's not completely convenient to run around to all of our furnaces and pull out it, their own bits and pieces. Well, that's easy to take care of. The easiest way to take care of it is just to create a line of hoppers underneath, pulling over into a centralized area. For example, let's say we put a chest here, and then we create a line of hoppers going f basically from the chest, though technically we are going from the furnaces to the ch chest, but since we have to do everything backwards because of how hoppers work, you know, this will work, and we will output everything that we need to output. As we can see already, things are already moving into the system because they're being pulled out of the furnace, going through the hoppers, and into the chest. Now, it'll take a moment for it to do the entire thing because, like I said, hoppers will only pull one at a time. So while the hopper below that furnace and the hopper below that furnace will pull simultaneously, thus getting into these two hoppers simultaneously, this hopper can only push into this hopper one at a time, but this hopper is getting input from the hopper below this furnace and this hopper. The same goes for this hopper here. It's getting stuff from both sides, but it can only output one at a time. So everything kind of backs up. It's not going to hurt anything. It's not actually going to damage anything. It's not even going to be noticeable when you're running the system. But it's just something to keep in mind in case you're wondering why it's not going exactly as fast as you expect. But that's great if you're perfectly fine with having a chest in the ground. But what if you want to have, you know, like, the input and output on the same level? Like, you bring those up, a couple more hoppers up, and then build a floor. Well, then how do you get the output up to the floor so people can access it without coming down and running risk of damaging your nice, pretty redstone contraptions? Well, to do that is slightly more complicated. What you have to do is you have to create a elevator. I use droppers to create a dropper elevator. And you do that by using comparators, again, in a circle. Now, the, same, the reason that we're making a circle of comparators is the same exact reason that we had to have the repeater here. And that's because only one item at a time will ever go into this bottom dropper, thus only ever having the comparator output one block. Now, we could have the same kind of setup over here. We have the comparator, we have the repeater, and then we have redstone going around. But this is actually just a little bit tighter since we're going back into the block that we just created. So now, once something goes into this dropper here, let's say this block of sand here, the comparator fired, sending a signal around, thus activating the dropper and pushing everything not into this dropper, but into this dropper. So it didn't push it up just one, it pushed it up two. Now the reason it did that is because droppers also take their signals from blocks beside them that get power. And this, this dropper here got power. It got a direct redstone signal, thus activating both this dropper and the dropper above it, thus pushing the sand up into this dropper. Now we can continue this pattern and just have another set of comparators attached to this dropper, thus pushing it up another two, and so on and so forth. But it's actually a little slow and kind of expensive since comparators are expensive. Well, there is an easier way to do that, and to do that, all you really need is a bunch of redstone torches. So what you do is you put your redstone torch on the side of this sand block, 
or whatever block you're using, put another block on top of that redstone torch, and then put a torch on this side, and another block on that torch, and then a redstone torch on the front of that block. So what happens is the comparator will activate this block, disabling that redstone torch, enabling that redstone torch, disabling this redstone torch, allowing the sand to go from the dropper here to here, and then when it does that, the comparator turns off, thus activating, deactivating, activating, powering, and sending it up another one. Now, if we do that now, and fire it off, we can see that it didn't go in here, it went up here. So we just have to continue the pattern. Just up, get my sand block back, over, one more, up, front, And then once we put our block in here, might be a little confusing as to why it does that, but it spits the sand out. Now I say it might be a little confusing because as we noticed, it went from this dropper to this dropper, but when we activated this torch, it only went to this dropper. So how did it get into that dropper to spit out the top? Well, it's the same thing as I was saying down here, where we get a direct redstone signal here, activated this one. We're just doing it in reverse, so that redstone signal activates that one, which also activates this one, but it doesn't work the other way around because of how the redstone torches work. It can be a little confusing, and I personally don't really like this setup. However, it is the best that I've found, and I did look up quite a few tutorials on how to make a dropper elevator. In fact, that's where I got this design. I didn't think it up myself. I found it on YouTube. And if I can find it again, I'll make sure to link to it in the comments. But it does work, and then we can just take our chest and put it on top, and then everything outputs at the same exact level as it inputs. Thus, we can have a floor, and we can input things over here, go over here, and get the output. Obviously, I skipped a piece, my mistake, where you have to actually attach the hoppers to the system. So then everything goes from these hoppers down here into these hoppers into the dropper that sends it up the dropper elevator and you get your output. So I hope that was informative and I hope that helped out people. If it did, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, give me a nice thumbs up there. Not a plus one, Scroogey plus. And I will say to you guys as always, keep playing the game and have fun.